Chokes! The person will be facing front now. Yeah, and leverage and physics, especially with an attacker who's going to be taller than you, which in more often than that case is going to be the situation. The person's going to be grabbing around the throat. All right, so the idea of what you're going to do is you're just going to take your hands, you put them down on the shoulder so that you're around the collarbone, so we're not actually choking each other yet at this point. So what you're going to do is she's going to take one hand, does not matter which one it is, raise it straight up to the ceiling. Here come those physics again. The opposite foot is going to step back. It's going to sort of pull me in, and then she's going to keep her arm up until she twists and breaks the grasp because she spread her shoulders and physics as opposed to she hit me so strong that she broke away. Now that cool part that I know you guys like, she comes up, she steps back, she clears. Well, what's right there? Elbow comes right back to the base. Finish them off. Okay? Does not matter how fast you do this technique because again it's physics. I'm bearing down hard on her collarbone. So she lifts, she can go super slow, and as long as that arm stays up, no matter how hard I grab, you will move out just like that pry bar that we did with the hands. Same principle. Okay? Where the mistake comes in if we switch rolls is everybody wants to chop. You want to come in and you want to hit the arm with your arm. Now, I know, that's just two things. We're back to muscle to muscle, and you make them punch you in the face. <laughs> Neither one feels good. So it's up and twist. Keep the hand up to the ceiling, get the armpit, and then come right back to the nose with an elbow. Okay? Five minutes on that one. Go! Front chokes. Work done! <laughs> this, this is a perfect example of what we're talking about today. Purely physical. So there's one huge aspect that is being taken out of this, and this is your emotional reaction to what's happening. Mm -hmm. There's a huge difference between, in a self-defense seminar, somebody grabbing you around your collarbones and saying, okay, here's the escape, somebody grabbing you around the throat and constricting. As soon as your airway gets cut off, your mind potentially goes into shock. Again, that's a whole other seminar dealing with the emotional response. Okay, so don't fool yourself into thinking, I know what I'm doing, I can protect myself automatically. We're arming ourselves with knowledge so you can go and continue to practice. That's one of the levels we get to at the higher stages when we start working with my brown and black belts. We're going to put you in that situation. But it's in a very controlled environment still. I'm going to choke you. Are you ready? Okay. Go. Boom. And we start to choke and they've got, how long do you have before you pass out? 20 seconds if you're lucky. Five seconds before you start seeing stars. Five seconds. How many techniques can you get done in five seconds? One, possibly two. And that's why they better count. They're going to come in and they're going to grab and they're going to go right into it. Okay? Would that technique work if you're on the ground? No. Because you need to have to roll to your back, which is a lot more dangerous. Well, when getting grabbed by the hair or the shoulder, don't you, uh, automatic reaction would be to scream or you know, a yell. Don't you want us to keep yelling if somebody's grabbing you and then do the techniques at the same time, get attention? Sure, but how many, how, you're not able to multitask yet. Right. Because what starts to happen is what we call paralysis by analysis. Help! 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 Right? You just keep yelling and you, I, I've got to yell, I've got to yell, I've got to yell. I would rather you take the situation, let, yes, perfect scenario, you're screaming through the whole thing while you're taking care of business. My hope is for each and every one of you to be able to take care of business yourself, and hopefully somebody would, a bystander would jump in and help, but I don't want to have to rely on that. Okay? So just in case you didn't hear Lynn's question earlier was, if you're on the ground, does this same process work? And the answer is no. If you're on the ground and the person's choking you from down, you don't want to put your arm up and roll because then that puts you on your back, or puts you on your stomach, puts them on your back. That's a whole worse situation. You don't want to put yourself in a worse predicament than what you're currently in. Okay? So the other statement that was coming up is, yes, this is not the self-defense. This is a self-defense. So what, another technique which is pretty common you'll see a lot of people do is the spread. Okay? I'm not a huge fan of that one because everybody, again, likes to go strength to strength instead of technique. Everybody wants to break. And now it becomes who's stronger. All right, we don't want to be stronger. We want to be smarter. Good, you're listening. 
Okay? So what's happening from this point is yes, we're going to practice this one now. It's our second choke. You're going to come down, put your hands together, bend your knees up, straight up to the ceiling. Hands do not separate. Now you get to kneel. Now you get to strike them. And then push to clear. Okay? Most common mistake is somebody's choking, especially if we switch roles. I'm taller. She thinks I have to break out, so she brings the forearms in and then tries to spread outwards. That's all it takes, and now she is stuck. How long did we say choking? Five seconds, reasonable air. So she goes, ah, didn't work. That's the end of it, right? You've got that one shot to get your airway back in and out. Okay, so hands together, bend, straight up. Think of a diving board. It's a reverse diving board. Diving upwards instead of down into the water. Once you're at the ceiling, then you can step in and strike. Okay, about five minutes, go. Uh, you're adults. You have choices your entire life, right? One of the benefits we have of living in this great country. This self-defense might work. The first self-defense when the arm comes up will work. What's your preference? It's up to you. It's up to you. Where the circumstance came in, as we were talking about, is with this type of height difference, you run into some extra obstacles. If, number one, she's got to break my pressure coming down, so there is some muscle versus muscle. In order to get away, she's probably going to have to go up onto her toes to get a little bit of extra height. Okay? If she starts to either try to break, when she tries to break out incorrectly, and or leans back, guess where we're going? Not by her choice. We don't want to end up there. Okay? You have that choice. Again, and what you practice, should you practice them both? Absolutely. Okay? But which one's going to be, you know, what, what's the, the ace up your sleeve? If you always have the one that you know works, no matter how big the person is or how strong they are, then that's my preference. That's why I showed you that one first. Last one came up as the question was, a uh, person was pinning you against a wall. And this would work similar to that or just a one-hand choke. Instead of somebody choking two-hand, they come up and they try and get you one hand. All right. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have some fun with this one. You've got all sorts of nerves throughout your whole body. You're going to start learning some of them. Okay? So, again, just for demonstration, you are going to work slowly with your partner on this one. You don't get to clock them. But what you're going to do is the person, and we'll do it from both sides so everybody can see, with a single-hand choke, She's just going to take her hand, that hammer fist that we did to the groin, she's going to come right into the center of the biceps. So she tries to destroy, there's a brachial nerve in there, she's going to try to destroy that nerve, or at least what starts to happen is if you hit it strong and hard enough, that the person's hand will pop open as a reaction. Okay, so since, you know, fair, turn about fair play. <laughs> I get to throw her around and do all sorts of stuff. Okay. Right then the center. So she smacks it. Okay. But see, she's being timid. She's sitting through. So this is where Turnabout's fair play. You get to smack it. Because this is one of the things, if you don't do it full power, there is no being nice about this. Right, right. Okay? There is no, okay, open sesame. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work. She's got to step in and she's got to pop me. In the brachial nerve. Not the, not the <laughs> okay? So that's where, whenever she's ready, I've got my hand firm on her throat. So if she hits it correctly, you're down at the joint. It still worked, right? So she hit me in the elbow joint and it pulled the hand away. That's okay. Drawback is I can come right back and grab again. What I'm looking to do is if you hit straight in that brachial nerve up in the biceps, that's going to destroy it. It's going to make the arm go numb. <laughs> Testosterone makes us stupid. <laughs> right? That might happen, but what you're hoping for at that point is a trigger mechanism somewhere in between where the person goes... <laughs> and something pops up in it. So again, so we switch so that you guys can see the person's grabbing in. You got that center. Okay, so as she would step in, it's just a hammer fist into that brachial nerve and it gives you that quick little shock motion. All right, so that would take care of a single choke with a lot of practice. And it's really fun too. Again, it causes damage, it makes the arm tingle and go numb. But when we say destroy, you're not ripping the arm off their body, causing permanent damage, that type of thing. That's what's nice about using smarter self-defense as opposed to harder self-defense.